Kdansk. Kdansk is a Polish city on the Baltic coast. It is the capital of the Pomeranian Voivodeship and the capital of Kashubia, Poland's principal seaport and the center of the country's fourth largest metropolitan area. The city lies on the southern edge of Gdansk Bay, of the Baltic Sea, in a conurbation with the city of Gdynia, spa town of Sopot, and suburban communities, which together form a metropolitan area called Patricity, Troimiesto, with a population approaching 1.4 million. Gdansk itself has a population of 464,829, June 2018, making it the largest city in the Pomerania region of northern Poland. Gdansk is the capital of Gdansk Pomerania and the largest city of Kashubia. With its origins as a Polish stronghold erected in the 980s by Misko I of Poland, the city's history is complex, with periods of Polish rule, periods of Prussian or German rule, and periods of autonomy or self-rule as a free city. In the early modern age Gdansk was a royal city of Poland. It was considered the wealthiest and the largest city of Poland, prior to the 18th century rapid growth of Warsaw. Between the World Wars, the Free City of Danzig was in a customs union with Poland and was located between German East Prussia and the so-called Polish Corridor. Gdansk lies at the mouth of the Matlawa River, connected to the Leniga, a branch in the delta of the nearby Vistula River, which drains 60% of Poland and connects Gdansk with the Polish capital, Warsaw. Together with the nearby port of Gdynia, Gdansk is also a notable industrial center. In the late Middle Ages, it was an important seaport and shipbuilding town, and, in the 14th and 15th centuries, a member of the Hanseatic League. In the interwar period, owing to its multi ethnic makeup and history, Danzig lay in a disputed region between Poland and the Weimar Republic, and later Nazi Germany. The city's ambiguous political status was exploited, furthering tension between the two countries which would ultimately culminate in the invasion of Poland and the first clash of the Second World War just outside the city limits. In the 1980s it would become the birthplace of the Solidarity Movement, which played a major role in bringing an end to communist rule in Poland and helped precipitate the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, the fall of the Berlin Wall and the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Gdansk is home to the University of Gdansk, Gdansk University of Technology, the National Museum, the Gdansk Shakespeare Theatre the Museum of the Second World War, Polish Baltic Philharmonic and the European Solidarity Center. The city also hosts St. Dominic's Fair, which dates back to 1260, and is regarded as one of the biggest trade and cultural events in Europe. The city's name is thought to originate from the Dania River, the original name of the Matlawa branch on which the city is situated. The name of his settlement was recorded after St. Adalbert's death in AD 997 as Herbs Chidenisk and later was written as K. Dansk in 1148, Dansk in 1188, Dansk in 1228, K. Dansk in 1236, Dansk in 1263, Dansk in 1311, Dansk in 1399, Dansk in 1414. Gdansk in 1656. In Polish, the modern name of the city is pronounced. In English, where the diacritic over the N is frequently omitted, the usual pronunciation is OR. The German name, Danzig, is pronounced as. The city's Latin name may be given as either Jadania, Gidnam, or Dantiskum. The variety of Latin names reflects the mixed influence of the city's Polish, German, and Kashubian heritage. Other former spellings of the name include Danzig, Danzig, and Danzig. On special occasions the city is also referred to as the Royal Polish City of Gdansk, Polish Królewskie Polskie Miasto Gdansk, Latin Regia Civitas Polonica Gedanensis, Kashubian Królewskie Polsk Sigard Gdansk. In the Kashubian language the city is called Gdansk. Kashubians also use the name our capital city Gdansk, Nas Stolksny Gard Gdansk, or the Kashubian capital city Gdansk, Stolksny Kasebsk Sigard Gdansk. The first written record thought to refer to Gdansk is the Vita of St. Adalbert. Written in 999, it describes how in 997 St. Adalbert of Prague baptized the inhabitants of Herbs Jidanisk, which separated the great realm of the Duke, i.e. Boleslaw the Brave of Poland, from the sea. No further written sources exist for the 10th and 11th centuries. Based on the date in Adalbert's Vita, the city celebrated its millennial anniversary in 1997. Archaeological evidence for the origins of the town was retrieved mostly after World War II had laid 90% of the city center in ruins, enabling excavations. The oldest 17 settlement levels were dated to between 980 and 1308. 
It is generally thought that Misko I of Poland erected a stronghold on the site in the 980s, thereby connecting the Polish state ruled by the Piast dynasty with the trade routes of the Baltic Sea. Traces of buildings and housing from 10th century have been found in archaeological excavations of the city. The site was ruled on behalf of Poland by the Sambridis Duchy and consisted of a settlement at the modern Long Market, craftsmen settlements along the Old Ditch, German merchant settlements around the St. Nicholas Church and the Old Piast stronghold. In 1186, a Cistercian monastery was set up in nearby Oliwa, which is now within the city limits. In 1215, the ducal stronghold became the center of a Pomerelian splinter duchy. At that time the area of the later city comprised different villages. At least since 1224-25 a German market settlement with merchants from Lubeck existed in the area of today's Long Market. In 1224-25, merchants from Lubeck were invited as hospits, immigrants with specific privileges, but were soon forced to leave by Swantopic II of the Sambridis in 1238 during a war between Swantopic and the Teutonic Knights, during which Lubeck supported the latter. Migration of merchants to the town resumed in 1257. Significant German influence did not appear until the 14th century, after the takeover of the city by the Teutonic Knights. At latest in 1263, Pomerelian Duke, Swantopic II, granted city rights under Lubeck law to the emerging market settlement. It was an autonomy charter similar to that of Lubeck, which was also the primary origin of many settlers. In a document of 1271, the Pomerelian Duke Mestwin II addressed the Lubeck merchants settled in the city as his loyal citizens from Germany. In 1300, the town had an estimated population of 2,000. While overall the town was not a very important trade center at that time, it had some relevance in trade with Eastern Europe. Low on funds, the Sambridis lent the settlement to Brandenburg, although they planned to take the city back and give it to Poland. Poland threatened to intervene, and Brandenburg left the town. Subsequently, the city was taken by Danish princes in 1301. The Teutonic Knights were hired by the Polish nobles to clear out the Danes. In 1308, the town was taken by Brandenburg in the Teutonic Knights' restored order. Subsequently, the Knights took over control of the town. Primary sources record a massacre carried out by the Teutonic Knights on the local population, of 10,000 people, but the exact number killed is subject of disputing modern scholarship. Some authors accept the number given in the original sources, while others consider 10,000 to have been a medieval exaggeration, although scholarly consensus is that a massacre of some magnitude did take place. The events were used by the Polish crown to condemn the Teutonic Knights in a subsequent papal lawsuit. The Knights colonized the area, replacing local Kashubians and Poles with German settlers. In 1308, they founded Ozek Haeckel work near the town, initially as a Slavic fishing settlement. In 1340, the Teutonic Knights built a large fortress, which became the seat of the Knights Comter. In 1346, they changed the town law of the city, which then consisted only of the Reichsstadt, to Kulm law. In 1358, Danzig joined the Hanseatic League and became an active member in 1361. It maintained relations with the trade centers Bruges, Novgorod, Lisboa, and Sevilla. Around 1377, the old town was equipped with city rights as well. In 1380, the new town was founded as the third, independent settlement. After a series of Polish Teutonic Wars, in the Treaty of Kalisz, 1343, the order had to acknowledge that it would hold Pomerelia as an alm from the Polish crown. Although it left the legal basis of the order's possession of the province in some doubt, the city thrived as a result of increased exports of grain, especially wheat, timber, potash, tar and other goods of forestry from Prussia and Poland via the Vistula River trading routes, although after its capture, the Teutonic Knights tried to actively reduce the economic significance of the town. While under the control of the Teutonic Order German migration increased. The Order's religious networks helped to develop Danzig's literary culture. A new war broke out in 1409, ending with the Battle of Grunwald, 1410, and the city came under the control of the Kingdom of Poland. A year later, with the first piece of thorn, it returned to the Teutonic Order. In 1440, the city participated in the foundation of the Prussian Confederation which was an organization opposed to the rule of the Teutonic Knights. This led to the Thirteen Years' War against the Teutonic Monastic State of Prussia, 1454-1466. On May 25, 1457 the city gained its rights and independency as an autonomous city. On May 15, 1457, 
Casimir IV of Poland granted the town the great privilege, after he had been invited by the town's council and had already stayed in town for five weeks. With the great privilege, the town was granted full autonomy and protection by the King of Poland. The privilege removed tariffs and taxes on trade within Poland, Lithuania and Ruthenia, present day Belarus and Ukraine, and conferred on the town independent jurisdiction, legislation, and administration of her territory, as well as the right to mint its own coin. Furthermore, the privilege united Old Town, Ozek and Main Town, and legalized the demolition of New Town, which had sided with the Teutonic Knights. By 1457, New Town was demolished completely, no buildings remained. Gaining free and privileged access to Polish markets, the seaport prospered while simultaneously trading with the other Hanseatic cities. After the Second Peace of Thorn, 1466, with the Teutonic monastic state of Prussia the warfare between the latter and the Polish crown ended permanently. After the union of Lublin between Poland and Lithuania in 1569 the city continued to enjoy a large degree of internal autonomy, cf. Danzigla. Being the largest and one of the most influential cities of Poland, it enjoyed voting rights during the royal election period in Poland. In 1569 a Mennonite church was founded here. In the 1575 election of a king to the Polish throne, Danzig supported Maximilian II against Stephen Bottery. It was the latter who eventually became monarch but the city, encouraged by the secret support of Denmark and Emperor Maximilian, shut its gates against Stephen. After the siege of Danzig, 1577, lasting six months, the city's army of 5,000 mercenaries was utterly defeated in a field battle on December 16, 1577. However, since Stephen's armies were unable to take the city by force, a compromise was reached. Stephen Bottery confirmed the city's special status and her Danzig law privileges granted by earlier Polish kings. The city recognized him as ruler of Poland and paid the enormous sum of 200,000 guldens in gold as payoff. Apology. Around 1640, Johannes Havelius established his in the old town. Polish King John III Sobieski regularly visited Havelius numerous times. Beside the large numbers of German speakers, whose elite sometimes distinguished their German dialect as Pomerelian, the city was home to a large number of Polish-speaking Poles, Jewish Poles, Latvian-speaking Kursiniki, Flemings, and Dutch. In addition, a number of Scots took refuge or migrated to and received citizenship in the city. During the Protestant Reformation, most German-speaking inhabitants adopted Lutheranism. Due to the special status of the city and significance within the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the city inhabitants largely became bicultural sharing both Polish and German culture and were strongly attached to the traditions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The city suffered a last great plague and a slow economic decline due to the wars of the 18th century. As a stronghold of Stanislaw Ashinsky's supporters during the War of the Polish Succession, it was taken by the Russians after the Siege of Danzig in 1734. The Danzig Research Society founded in 1743 was one of the first of its kind. Danzig was annexed by the Kingdom of Prussia in 1793, in the Second Partition of Poland. An attempt of student uprising against Prussia led by Gottfried Benjamin Bartoli was crushed quickly by the authorities in 1797. During the era of Napoleon the city became a free city in the period extending from 1807 to 1814. In 1815, after France's defeat in the Napoleonic Wars, it again became part of Prussia and became the capital of Regierungsbezirk Danzig within the province of West Prussia. The city's longest-serving president was Robert von Blumenthal, who held office from 1841, through the revolutions of 1848, until 1863. With the unification of Germany under Prussian hegemony, the city became part of Imperial Germany, the German Empire, in 1871, and remained so until 1919, after Germany's defeat in World War I. When Poland regained its independence after World War I with access to the sea as promised by the Allies on the basis of Woodrow Wilson's 14 points, point 13 called for an independent Polish state, which should be assured a free and secure access to the sea. The Poles hoped the city's harbor would also become part of Poland. However, since Germans formed a majority in the city, with Poles being a minority, the city was not placed under Polish sovereignty. Instead, in accordance with the terms of the Versailles Treaty, it became the free city of Danzig, German, Freiisch. Danzig, an independent quasi state under the auspices of the League of Nations with its external affairs largely under Polish control. 
Poland's rights also included free use of the harbor, a Polish post office, a Polish garrison in Westerplatte district, and customs union with Poland. This led to a considerable tension between the city and the Republic of Poland. The free city had its own constitution, national anthem, parliament, Volkstag, and government, Senat. It issued its own stamps as well as its currency, the Danzig Gulden. In the early 1930s the local Nazi party capitalized on pro-German sentiments and in 1933 garnered 50% of vote in the parliament. Thereafter, the Nazis under Gauleiter Albert Forster achieved dominance in the city government, which was still nominally overseen by the League of Nations Shy Commissioner. The German government officially demanded the return of Danzig to Germany along with an extraterritorial, meaning under German jurisdiction highway through the area of the Polish corridor for land-based access from the rest of Germany. Hitler used the issue of the status of the city as a pretext for attacking Poland and on May 1939, during a high-level meeting of German military officials explained to them, it is not Danzig that is at stake. For us it is a matter of expanding our Lebensraum in the east, adding that there will be no repeat of the Czech situation, and Germany will attack Poland at first opportunity, after isolating the country from its western allies. After the German proposals to solve the three main issues peacefully were refused and the 16-point proposal has been undermined by the British government, Navy Minister Cooper, German-Polish relations rapidly deteriorated. Germany attacked Poland on 1 September after having signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union, this includes the secret part with the upcoming treatment of the Baltic states, in late August and after postponing the attack three times due to needed time for diplomatic, peaceful solutions. The German attack began in Danzig, with a bombardment of Polish positions at Westerplatte by the German battleship, and the landing of German infantry on the peninsula. Outnumbered Polish defenders at Westerplatte resisted for seven days before running out of ammunition. Meanwhile, after a fierce day long fight, September 1, 1939, defenders of the Polish post office were tried and executed, then buried on the spot in the Danzig quarter of Zaspa in October 1939. In 1998 a German court overturned their conviction and sentence. The city was officially annexed by Nazi Germany and incorporated into the Reichsgau Danzig West Prussia. About 50% of members of the Jewish community of Danzig had left the city within a year after a pogrom in October 1937. After the Kristallnacht riots in November 1938 the community decided to organize its emigration and in March 1939 a first transport to Palestine started. By September 1939 barely 1,700 mostly elderly Jews remained. In early 1941, just 600 Jews were still living in Danzig, most of whom were later murdered in the Holocaust. Out of the 2,938 Jewish community in the city 1,227 were able to escape from the Nazis before the outbreak of war. Nazi secret police had been observing Polish minority communities in the city since 1936, compiling information which in 1939 served to prepare lists of Poles to be captured in Operation Tannenberg. On the first day of the war, approximately 1,500 ethnic Poles were arrested, some because of their participation in social and economic life, others because they were activists and members of various Polish organizations. On September 2, 1939, 150 of them were deported to the Setcherheitsdienstkampfstutthof, some from Danzig, and murdered. Many Poles living in Danzig were deported to Stutthof or executed in the Piasnica Forest. In 1941, Hitler ordered the invasion of the Soviet Union, eventually causing the fortunes of war to turn against Germany. As the Soviet army advanced in 1944, German populations in Central and Eastern Europe took flight, resulting in the beginning of the Great Population Shift. After the final Soviet offensives began in January 1945, Hundreds of thousands of German refugees converged on Danzig, many of whom had fled on foot from East Prussia, some tried to escape through the city's port in a large-scale evacuation involving hundreds of German cargo and passenger ships. Some of the ships were sunk by the Soviets, including the after an evacuation was attempted at neighboring Gdynia. In the process, tens of thousands of refugees were killed. The city also endured heavy Allied and Soviet air raids. Those who survived and could not escape had to face the Soviet army, which captured the heavily damaged Eve city on March 30, 1945, followed by large-scale rape and looting. In line with the decisions made by the Allies at the Yalta and Potsdam conferences, the city was annexed by Poland. The remaining German residents of the city who had survived the war fled or were forcibly expelled from their home city to post-war Germany, 
and the city was repopulated by ethnic Poles, up to 18%, 1948, of them had been deported by the Soviets in two major waves from Polish areas annexed by the Soviet Union, i.e. from the eastern portion of pre-war Poland. Parts of the historic old city of Gdansk, which had suffered large-scale destruction during the war, were rebuilt during the 1950s and 1960s. The reconstruction was not tied to the city's pre-war appearance, but instead was politically motivated as a means of culturally cleansing and destroying old traces of German influence from the city. Any traces of German tradition were ignored, suppressed, or regarded as Prussian barbarism only worthy of demolition, while Flemish slash Dutch. Italian and French influences were used to replace the historically accurate Germanic architecture which the city was built upon since the 14th century. Boosted by heavy investment in the development of its port and three major shipyards for Soviet ambitions in the Baltic region, Gdansk became the major shipping and industrial center of the Communist People's Republic of Poland. In December 1970, Gdansk was the scene of anti-regime demonstrations, which led to the downfall of Poland's communist leader Władysław Gomułka. During the demonstrations in Gdansk and Gdynia, military as well as the police opened fire on the demonstrators causing several dozen deaths. Ten years later, in August, 1980, Gdansk shipyard was the birthplace of the Solidarity Trade Union movement in September 1981, in order to deter solidarity. Soviet Union launched the largest military exercise Exercise Zap at 81 in human history, during which amphibious landings were conducted near Gdansk. Meanwhile, the Solidarity held its first National Congress in Hala Olivia, Gdansk when more than 800 deputies participated. Its opposition to the communist regime led to the end of Communist Party rule in 1989, and sparked a series of protests that successfully overturned the communist regimes of the former Soviet bloc. Solidarity's leader Lech Walesa, became president of Poland in 1990. In 2014 the European Solidarity Center, a museum and library devoted to the history of the movement, opened in Gdansk. Gdansk native Donald Tusk became prime minister of Poland in 2007, and president of the European Council in 2014. Today Gdansk is a major shipping port and tourist destination. Gdansk has a climate with both oceanic and continental influences. According to some categorizations, it has an oceanic climate, CFB, while others classified as belonging to the continental climate zone, DFB. It actually depends on whether the mean reference temperature for the coldest winter month is set at or. Gdansk's dry winters and the precipitation maximum in summer are indicators of continentality. However seasonal extremes are less pronounced than this in inland Poland. The city has moderately cold and cloudy winters with mean temperature in January and February near or below and mild summers with frequent showers and thunderstorms. Average temperatures range from an average monthly rainfall varies per month with a rather low annual total of. In general, it is damp, variable, and mild. The seasons are clearly differentiated. Spring starts in March and is initially cold and windy, later becoming pleasantly warm and often very sunny. Summer, which begins in June is predominantly warm but hot at times with temperature reaching as high as at least once per year with plenty of sunshine interspersed with heavy rain. Gdansk averages 1,700 hours of sunshine per year. July and August are the warmest months. Autumn comes in September and is at first warm and usually sunny, turning cold, damp, and foggy in November. Winter lasts from December to March and includes periods of snow. January and February are the coldest months with the temperature sometimes dropping as low as the industrial sections of the city are dominated by shipbuilding, petrochemical and chemical industries, and food processing. The share of high tech sectors such as electronics, telecommunications, IT engineering, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals is on the rise. Amber processing is also an important part of the local economy, as the majority of the world's amber deposits lie along the Baltic coast. The Pomeranian Voivode ship, including Gdansk, is also a major tourist destination in the summer as millions of Poles and other European tourists flock to the beaches of the Baltic coastline. Major companies in Gdansk The city has some buildings surviving from the time of the Hanseatic League. Most tourist attractions are located along or near Ulitz at Lugga, Long Street and Luggy Targ, Long Market, a pedestrian thoroughfare surrounded by buildings reconstructed in historical, primarily during the 17th century, style and flanked at both ends by elaborate city gates. This part of the city is sometimes referred to as the Royal Route, since it was once the former path of processions for visiting kings of Poland. Walking from end to end, 
Sites encountered on or near the Royal Route include Gdansk has a number of historical churches. The city's 17th century fortifications represent one of Poland's official national historic monuments, Pomnik History I, as designated on 16 September 1994 and tracked by the National Heritage Board of Poland. Other main sites in the historical city center include Main sites outside the historical city center include in 2011-2015 the Warsaw-Gdansk-Gdynia railway route underwent a major upgrading costing $3 billion, partly funded by the European Investment Bank, including track replacement, realignment of curves and relocation of sections of track to allow speeds up to, modernization of stations, and installation of the most modern ETH signaling system, which was completed in June 2015. In December 2014 new Alstom Pendolino high-speed trains were put into service between Gdansk. Warsaw and Krakow reducing the rail travel time from Gdansk to Warsaw to 2 hours 58 minutes, further reduced in December 2015 to 2 hours 39 minutes. Gdansk is the starting point of the Eurovelo 9 cycling route which continues southward through Poland, then into the Czech Republic, Austria and Slovenia before ending at the Adriatic Sea in Pula, Croatia. There are many popular professional sports teams in the Gdansk and Tricity area. Amateur sports are played by thousands of Gdansk citizens and also in schools off all levels, elementary, secondary, university. The city's professional football club is Lechia Gdansk. Founded in 1945, they play in the Extra Klasa, Poland's top division. Their home stadium, Stadion Energy Gdansk, was one of the four Polish stadiums to host the UEFA Euro 2012 competition. Other notable clubs include rugby club Lechia Gdansk. 12 times Polish champion, and motorcycle speedway club Wybertz's Gdansk. The city's Hala Olivia was a venue for the official 2009 Eurobasket. Contemporary Gdansk is the capital of the province called Pomeranian Voivodeship and is one of the major centers of economic and administrative life in Poland. Many important agencies of the state and local government levels have their main offices here the Provincial Administration Office, the Provincial Government, the Ministerial Agency of the State Treasury. The Agency for Consumer and Competition Protection, the National Insurance Regional Office, the Court of Appeals, and the High Administrative Court. Gdansk Voivodeship was extended in 1999 to include most of former Slupsk Voivodeship, the western part of Elblog Voivodeship and Chojnis County from Bidgosh Voivodeship to form the new Pomeranian Voivodeship. The area of the region was thus extended from and the population rose from 1,333,800, 1980 to 2,198,000, 2000. By 1998, Tricity constituted an absolute majority of the population, almost half of the inhabitants of the new region live in the center. Legislative power in Gdansk is vested in a unicameral Gdansk City Council, Rada which comprises 34 members. Council members are elected directly every four years. Like most legislative bodies, the city council divides itself into committees which have the oversight of various functions of the city government. Gdansk is divided into 34 administrative divisions, 6 jailnikas and 28 osidals. Gdansk jailnikas include, Helm, Piski Migovu, Persimors Wielki, Shrod Mieszczie, Resh Dalmi, Resh Gorni. Osidals, Nialki, Bretao, Bretseno, Jazian, Kokoski, Krakowiec Gorki Zakodni. Letnica, Matarnia, Mlaniska, Novi Port, Oliwa, Olsinka, Orunya SW. Vojcheklips, Osawa, Persirobka, Persimorsmail, Rudniki, Siedlis, Sobiesuo Island, Stogi, Strasiza, Suchanino, Ujashisko Lostoas, Sevendwer, Whiskers Mikiwiza, Zaspa Mlanyek, Zaspa Rostahe, Zabianka Wechhirahe Litgau Otisha. There are 15 higher schools including three universities. In 2001 there were 60,436 students, including 10,439 graduates. Gdansk is twinned with. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.